Uh, we have also W number, que es radical 3 minus I. Uh -huh. Aha, yeah, I need to find multiplication. C times W. Of course, we can do it uh, in, the, in the same way that we are doing in college algebra, no? It's FOIL, and that's it. However, they want que you express in polar. Entonces, the first job is transformation this complex number in polar form. And remember, the R, uh, what's the problem? The R is a square root, two square plus two square. Okay, this is the formula that two square is four, four, four plus four is eight. And square root 8 is rational a little bit to radical 2. Uh -huh. And this angle, this complex number, sorry, is located in the first quadrant. It's 2, this is the real axis, this is the imaginary axis. 1, 2, 1, 2, it's obvious, get the angle of 45 degrees, right? Uh, if you want, you compute theta, tangent inversa of 2 divided by 2 get 1. And what is the angle whose tangent is 1? It's 45 degrees. Uh -huh, pi over 4, either way. The answer is expressing gradients, therefore, pi over 4. So my first uh, conversion Z number in polar is 2 radical 2 cosine I sine pi over 4. Everyone follow me so far? Yes. Okay. Now let's move on to the second. Same formulas, different number, of course. R is equal to square root and radical 3 square 3 plus, uh, I don't care the sign, actually it's negative 1 the coefficient, but when you is raised to the second power, it becomes positive. So it's, it's uh, 3 plus 1, get 4, and radical 4 is 2. Okay, now theta. Theta is complicated. Remember, my recommendation always is you are doing the sketch of the complex number, no? And the complex number is radical 3i, radical 3i, radical 3i, radical 3i. Pero positive, no? Uh -huh. A radical 3, <coughs> so the repression, representation for the second complex number. This is Z. And W is radical 3, is the real part is positive. Uh -huh. And both the imaginary part is negative. It's 1 here, negative 1, because of negative i. But the complex number line. In the, in the full quarter, it's a W. It's important to keep in mind this because when you put in the formula, the formula, you know, is, is no interpretation very well in the quarter, no? So say actually Y get negative one divided by radical three. Uh, so, if you rationalize a tiny inverse of negative radical 3 over 3, can you remember that number, no? This number, see, for example, see, I say you compute the tiny inverse of radical 3 over 3 positive, and you immediately see that it's 30 degrees, no? Do you remember that or no? Yes. Uh, some students that don't remember, you see when you change the thing like that, look, you, I don't know, have no idea, theta, a goal, and tangent theta is radical 3 over 3. So what is the angle, what is the angle whose tangent is radical 3 over 3 is 5 or 6. But this is in the first quadrant, so and the fourth quadrant is 11 pi over 6. Makes sense, right? So 330 degrees. 
Okay, so today the answer of this is 11 pi over 6. And the representation for that complex number is 2w, 2 cosine i sine 11 pi over 6. Right? 11, 11, 11. 11, it's 11 pi. So why is it 11 pi over 6 and no uh, 30? No what? No what? Negative 30? Yes, professor. You can, you can. The, that dependency is called to go y or grow y, the analysis. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can, you can. Really, Paul has ambiguous. Now you can say that this is equivalent to say, well, okay, okay, I don't like 11 pi. Is two cosine i sine negative pi over six. They are equivalent. They are equivalent. Okay, so professor, and the test if we put both of the answer, they are correct, right, professor? Yeah, because they are equivalent. Okay. You put in, in one test four and two plus two. They are different between this statement. No, it's the same, right? Right. Uh -huh. So say one hundred point for for you in both cases. Okay, now multiplication. Multiplication is, you know, multiplication the radio. So the formula of the multiplication to complex number is so you have R1 cosine I sine theta 1 times R2 cosine I sine theta 2. The answer is multiplication of R1, R2 cosine I sine theta 1 plus theta. Your multiplication this is two radical two. in our specific example we have two radical two cosine i sine pi over four time two cosine i sine 11 pi over six okay there's a multiplication of four radical two no cosine i sine to so see you have pi over four plus 11 pi over six well, okay, let's do it. Is, uh, you know, least common denominator is 12, no? And so it's 3 pi, because 12 divided by 4 is 3, times pi is 3 pi, plus um, 12 divided by 22. Uh, and this is 25, no? 25 pi over 12. But the problem is that 25 over 12 is bigger than 2 pi, yes or no? Because 24 divided by 12 is 2 pi. So say obviously 25 divided by 12 is, see you subtracting, in order to find the coterminal angle, you subtracting 25 pi over 12 minus 2 pi, is equivalent to say 12 is 25 pi, minus 24 pi, no? Because 12 divided by 1 is 12 times 2, 24, and this is pi over 12. So actually, the fantastic conclusion is 4 radical 2 cosine i sine pi over 12. Do you see the idea? Let me see, because sometimes happen in Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. In the option C, no? Yes. I want to. Any question, right? Look like complicated or look like easy? A little bit complicated. No, no, no. What part is complicated? All right. The complicated part is like when we found the tangent, the, the uh -huh. angle, like this is the complicated part for me. Uh -huh. What part? What part? What part? That part? Yes, Professor. Wait, 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 yes, no. That part? Y yeah, like when we found like the, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because you don't remember very well que, what is the angle whose tangent is radical 3 over 3? No, Professor, no this part, like from the beginning, how we found it. Like oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay. Remember, Manuela, you are doing this case mandatory. Why? Because the formula is ambiguous. Because when you apply the formula, theta equal tangent inversa. 
y over x. Ajá, suppose que eh, y value es negative. O suppose no, que x value es negative. Entonces, when you compute that, the answer is negative. Entonces, you lost information about specifically which quadrant you are. Entonces, bueno, ok, está en inversa of the one negative number. I abstract y take the positive number. I find the angle in the first quadrant, que es satisfy that value, que en our example was pi over 6. Ajá, entonces, I don't know the tangent is negative in the, in the, in the, in the fourth quadrant y en the second quadrant. Entonces, I don't know. Entonces, to determine in what quadrant you are working, you plot the complex number in the axis. This is the real axis. And this is the imaginary axis. And um, the complex number que we are working is radical 3 minus i. Radical 3 is a positive number. i is negative, so it's down. And the complex number is located in the four quadrant. Therefore, the angle que you put in the, for, in, the, in, the, in the polar is the angle in the four quadrant. End the story. Clear? Now it's clear. Thank you, Professor. Okay, super. So don't forget, when you manipulate a complex number and you try to convert from a rectangular to polar, you are doing the sketch on the complex number and actually you determine in what quadrant line. Okay? Okay, thank you. We continue next, same page, number 18. Uh, number 18 is easy. It's 1 plus i raised to the 20 power. Let me record the formula, guys. <clears throat> when you have a complex number in polar, of course, r cosine i sine theta, and you raise to the n power, you raise to the n power the radius, and you multiply the angle by n. This is the formula, easy. Mobri formula. But unfortunately, we have no my complex number in polar. We have been rectangular. But okay, we convert to polar. Uh -huh. Entonces, number one, do the sketch. In what quadrant lie this complex number? Okay, it's obvious in the first quadrant because both components are positive. We are imaginary. One, just that one, and one. Get that one because it's i. In this axis, you have i, 2i, 3i, 4i. So my complex number lie here. And the angle is a so big, 45 degrees, no? 5 by 4. See, in this problem, I prefer working. And it's obvious that the diagonal of the square is radical 2, no? Oh, whatever. You, you, you copy like that. A square root, x square plus y square. In this example, x and y is equal to 1 both. So it's 1 square plus 1 square is like a 2. So the polar representation for that complex number is radical 2 cosine i sine 45 degree. Uh, I did in degree. Uh, I don't know why. Uh -huh. No, I try to avoid it. Uh, uh, radian only when it's necessary because the answer is present radian. Okay, this is the formula I need to raise to the 20 power, 20 power, 20 power, 20 power. And the formula say is radical 2 raised to the 20 power. I want to compute it in a few seconds. Cosine I sine and multiplication 20 times 45 degree. So far it's clear? Yes. Okay, so now, <clears throat> wow, radical 2, I copy separately, the arithmetic part, radical 2, x to the 20 power, wow, 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 I have no idea, <laughs> well, yeah, you can, uh, you can do it in a different way, look, look at that, that way I like so much is, you, for example, you use, for example, you consider get 2, radical 2 is right to the 1 half, no? And right to the 20 power? is 
2, 20 divided by 2, que es 10. 2 de 10. And 2 de 10 es 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, que es 1024. Ese es una posibilidad. Ese es una posibilidad. I suppose que es la mejor posibilidad. Bien. Ajá. Ajá, ajá. Entonces, now I know que the value is 1024. 1024 cosine I sine and multiplication 20 times 900. 900. Pero the problem is que 900 is bigger than 360, ¿no? Ok, entonces I need to find the, the terminal. Ok, no, leave it like that. It's, it's ugly, ¿no? No, no, no. So now... <coughs> One fantastic way is you take 900 and divide it by 360. When you are doing this action, you determine how many revolutions have 900. And the answer is 2.5. So I interpret that 900 is two revolutions, one, two, and half of revolution, the 0.5. And you take the decimal bar and multiply it by 360. Okay, so we get 180. Now, actually, this is equivalent, 1024 cosine I sine 180 degrees. Do you see? Yes. Now, leave it like that? No. Okay, remember, when it's a quadrantal angle, so 0, 90, 180, 270, it's because this number is purely real or purely imaginary. In this case, purely real. And by the way, 180 is in the opposite direction. Therefore, if this number is negative, real number. Yes or no? Do you understand this idea? Yes. Uh -huh. However, I have no idea. I don't know anything. I copy. 1024, parentheses, cosine 180, plus I sine 180. Cosine 180, negative 1. Sine 180, 0. That's mean that we have no. And the final answer, the beautiful final answer is minus 1024. Boom. Idiots. Like the auction B. In our package. Any question? What part you don't understand very well? The thing that, I, the, that I'm still like confused about it, Professor, is how we find, find the angle. The angle, the angle, Nuela, I skipped that part because it's 45, you know, intuitively, intuitively I say it's 45. However, the formula is theta equal tangent inverse of y over x. And who is y? Y is 1. And x is 1, no? If 1 over 1 is 1. Now, again, we come back to the situation that okay, tiny inverse of 1 is 45 degrees or pi over 4. Uh -huh. In this case, positive. So, tiny is positive in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. But according to my sketch of the complex number, obviously, it's in the first quadrant. That is the reason that the answer is 45 degrees. Okay, copy here, 45 degrees. Any question? No, so professor, when we have like similar cases, we need to always like do the sketch to see if it lays on the first, second, third, or fourth quadrant, right, professor? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. The rest of the student follow me, guys. Yes. Say something, no? Yes, no. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay, that was number 18, no? Okay, 19 is similar, it's a power. It's a power. It's a power. Okay. okay. 19 is... One minus i. Ooh. One minus i raised to the 10 power. 
Okay, so the first one is conversion from rectangular to polar, that complex number. Let's do in the sketch to understand the position of this complex number. Real axis, imaginary axis. The real part is positive. This segment is one, that one. And the imaginary part is negative. This is negative I. Therefore, the position for the our complex number here. This is our complex number. Okay, I put like a vector, but not necessarily. And to say now, if you compute a nuela, it's obvio que it's negative 45 degree, no? Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, oh. Si you apply uh, the, the measure of the angle uh, control wise is 315 degrees. Make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. That angle shh, tum, without doing any mathematics is 315. Uh -huh. And the radio is again similar to the previous example, the radical 2, because the same is 1, 1, no? The radical 2. Now the representation in polar of this complex number is radical to cosine i sine 315 degree ready to the tempo. Good? Yes. Okay, apply the formula. You raise radical to, to the 10 power, cosine i sine, multiplication is 3150 degree. It's, it's, it's easy the formula. You apply the power in the part of the radio and multiplication the angle. Okay, 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 okay. Almost we finish the easy part. Now this is radical two gets two to the one half raised to the ten power. Gets two to the ten divided by two get five, and two to the fifth power is thirty two. Oh. Thirty two. I know that my complex number is 32. Cosine I sine, mm -mm -mm. but the 3000 I don't like. I need to discover the coterminal angle. It's a 3150 divided by 360 is 8.75. Wow. That's mean that 3150 is a revolution. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight revolution. In the ninth revolution, rotate 0 0.75. You take the decimal part, multiplication by 360, and you get in what part you stop in the ninth revolution. Okay, it's 27. And this is cosine I sine 270 degree. Everyone understand this idea? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. This is the most important guy. That's the reason we study trigonometric for this application. Now, this is again a quadrantal angle. And quadrantal angle maybe is or real, pure, real, or pure imaginary. So now I span a little bit. 32 cosine 270 degree plus I sine 270 degree. I need to know by memory. Because sine 270 is zero and this is negative one. Actually, my complex number answer is negative 32i. I make sense because 270 degree lie in the negative part of the imaginary axis. Uh -huh. so this is purely imaginary number, but negative. Negative 32i. Entonces, the option A. Yes, Professor, can you zoom it? Because I can see it like the other part. I want to take a picture. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Professor. Any other question? Does you are clear? Okay, somebody say something. 
I forgot to open the laptop. Because the problem is when I see the whiteboard, I don't see the chat. Let me open the laptop. Pero activate the microphone. You want to say something? It was me, Professor. I said no question. It's clear. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. And Mr. You, or Miss, you cannot activate the microphone. Some people have problems with the microphone in the laptop no? or computer. <laughs> and we're translate, no? Okay. Well, I, I put it on the laptop. Okay. Let's move into the next problem, which is the number, number 20, no? 20, 20. 20, 20, 20. 20 is, is a parenthesis minus radical 3 plus i raised to the 6 power. Step number one is conversion. The rectangular form of the complex number 2 polar. But first of all, do the sketch to understand the position. Quadrant line. Okay, this is my famous complex plane. This is a real axis, imaginary axis. And the real part is negative. The real part is like that. Suppose this is a negative radical tree. But the imaginary part is positive. One. Therefore, my complex number lies in the second one. No good. Second quadrant. Uh, my angle is this, theta. But for finding theta, why don't you put theta equal tangent inverse y, que one. Then you omit the i that you could take the coefficient from, the b. y, y, sorry. And this x, minus radical 2, radical 3, sorry. Uh -huh. And we did this before. This is radical 3 over 3, rational i, but it's negative. So time, a theta is tangent inverse of negative radical 3 over 3. Yeah, I remember very well that si it's positive, tangent inverse of radical 3 over 3 is pi over 6. So, so now, this pi over 6 re re represents my reference angle here. This is pi over 6. Therefore, my angles would be 5 pi over 6. Because it's supplementary, no? Together is pi. Okay, uh -huh. this is the famous theta is 5 pi over 6. In the second one. Oh, and degree, if you want to prefer, I want to prefer in degree, 150. So this is 30. Uh -huh. And also this guy is 30. And this guy is 150. So far, everyone follow me or no? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Now go the, compute the R. The R is the square root uh, radical 3. I don't care the sign. Well, I'm actually minus, but when it's square, become positive. Plus 1 square. The square root 3 is mm, 3. Plus 1 is 4. The square root 4 is 2. This is now too much work to determine that this number, negative radical 3 plus i, is equivalent to 2 cosine i sine 150 degree. Important. Good? Yes. Now raise to the sixth power. And you said the formula, Mowry formula. Mowry say, when you raise this to the sixth power, the power is 2 to the 6, okay, by the way, 64, cosine i sine multiplication 6 times 150. Okay, 900 again. This is 64, 900. And we did that, huh? But let's do it again. 900 is 900 divided by 360. Okay, is I did before 
is 2.5. And 0.5 multiplied by 360 is 180. Oh, nice. So that's mean that our complex number is real, but this negative. So it's actually it's negative 64, but oh no, see, I don't remember, no problem. You replace this by 64. This is uh, 0. Uh -huh. 0. 0.5 or 2.5. Because you remove. Enuela, interpretation this. 2.5 means one revolution, two revolution, and half of revolution of this. Bang. And I stop here. That you remove the whole bar, you take the decimal bar and multiply by 360. In order to find what part of the a, a next revolution, okay, by the way, is the third revolution just stopped. You remember this or you don't remember that? I, I do, I do. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. So say now, 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 now. Now. Oh, now. Uh, 64. Cosine 180 plus I sine 180. I know by memory cosine 180 is negative 1 and sine 180 is 0. The answer is negative 64 exactly the option B and the handout. Super good? Yes. Okay, let's go to the complicated part. Okay, the complicated part is the radical. Because in radical, remember, we have multiple solutions. So <clears throat> when you compute, for example, the four root of the one number, we have four solutions. Okay? Suppose 21. Here, that page. That page, no, that page. Okay. <clears throat> Find all the complex root, leaving your answer in polar form. Okay. I appreciate it so much because compared to rectangular, it's a little bit complicated. And so we have, <clears throat> I need to find the four root of negative 16. This is my problem. But the problem is, okay, we have four solutions. One, two, three, and four solutions. This is the problem, guys. Uh -huh. So what is the formula okay, we are using? The formula is, n root of the n of the any complex number express n polar r cosine i sine theta is equal to the square root of m for the radio is similar to the power but a little bit more complicated it's theta plus 360 degree k divided by m this is the argument for the cosine and sine. And k, who is k? k is a number in between 0 and a minus 1, where k is 0, 1, 2, 3, bam, 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 to n minus 1. In our specific example, k is a 4 root, so n is 4. See, if n is 4, K is 0, 1, 2, and 3. And this is the reason that we have 1, 2, 3, and 4 solutions. Got it? That first solution is for K0. The second solution is for K1. Third solution, K2. 
and last solution k. Well, but the first thing I should do is convert this number in polar. But it's easy because this number is purely real. The negative 16 is purely real. See, it's purely real is because in the complex plane, that number lie exactly on the real, but in opposite direction, like that. And the radio is 16, and the angle is 180. Make sense? No mathematical, intuition only. So now, negative 16 and rectangular is equivalent to say plus 0i is 16 cosine i sine 180 degree. Do you understand very well this or no? No. No. What part no? The part that you find, found the angle 180. Well, no. Okay. I use intuition. After I want to explain mathematical. But intuition is, look, I do the sketch of this number in the complex plane. It's negative 16. Negative 16 is a number exactly in the red arrow. Do you see the red arrow? Yes. Uh -huh. Do you see that that number expressed geometrically in the complex plane is like a one vector? No, no vector. It's an arrow. You know, it's a, yeah, it's a complex number, but lie on the real field in the opposite direction. Make sense? Yes, because it's negative, right, Professor? Uh -huh. Therefore, the angle measured from zero degree is 180 degree. Ma make sense or no? Now I understood. Thank you. Now I understood. Thank you so much. Mm, okay. Another possibility is using that formula. Theta is equal tangent inverse of y over x. So now it's tangent inverse of zero, que es the imaginary part, divided by negative 16. And zero divided by negative 16 is zero. It's zero have no sign, tangent inverse is zero. But this is ambiguous, because this angle is zero degree, or 180 degree, satisfy that condition. Then you need, ah, see, it's positive number, see, it's positive 16. For sure, I agree, 100% is zero. See, it's negative 180. So keep in mind, Keep in mind this idea, look. Complex plane, real axis, imaginary axis. Any pure real number is this, or this. And the angle is C. This is a complex, the pure real, but positive. Pure real negative is like that. And it's a pure real but negative. And the answer is 180. Now, pure, pure imaginary positive. Positive. And the angle is 90 degrees, theta. And pure imaginary negative. Pure imaginary negative. The angle is 270 degrees. Now more clear. More clear. Uh -huh. yes. If you try to do using the formulas, the formula is ambiguous for this situation. Is it not good? Not good. Ah, see, yeah, the angle is intermediate, 45. Uh, 30 degree, 60 degree, and to see the, the formula work very well, very well. But the quadrant, no. And the quadrant is ambiguous. However, if you know this idea, you have no problem. Very good? Yes, but the intuition is easier I, because it gives you like the exactly number. Okay, so we try. But this is intuition work good. No es la en cuadrantal. When the angle is no cuadrantal, and then you need to apply the formula, right? Right. 
And don't forget to make a sketch because it's ambiguous the quadrant. So, if it's positive, it's negative. If it's in the third quadrant, you know, if it's in the full quadrant. Okay, so my, my representation in polar of this component, so that my problem is now reduce it like that. For root, no negative thing anymore, it's 16 cosine i sine 180 degree. This is my new problem. Express it, this number que es real, like a complex and four. Uh -huh. Entonces, it's easy because it's four root of 16, que you know que es two, cosine i sine eh, 180 plus 360k divided by 4 because n is 4. Degree, degree. Okay, this is 2. You know that. So you, uh, this, is, uh, this is easy but long. K is 0. The first solution is 2. Cosine I sine. Eh, 180. Divided by 4, right? Uh, because I suppose que K is 0. That part disappear. That part disappears. And stay alive only 180, no? Uh -huh. Then uh, 180 divided by 4, 25. 45, sorry. The 2 cosine i sine, 45 degree. This is my first answer. For k equal 1, uh, 2 cosine i sine, 180 plus 360, because k is now 1, is 360, divided by 4. And you put in your own calculator, 2 cosine i sine, and you add in 360, 180, and divided by 4, and the answer is 135 degrees. K equal to exactly the same. This is 2 cosine i sine, 180 plus 360 times 2, because k is 2 now, divided by 4, 360 divided by 2 is 720 plus 180 and divided by 4 and the answer is 225. 2 cosine i sine 225 degree. And last, K3 is 2 cosine i sine 180 plus 360 times 3 because K3 three now divided by 4 and the answer is 2 cosine i sine 315 degrees. Okay. Uh, all we happen in this case is very, very interesting because the solution of the four root lie in this order. Look, 45 degree, the radius 2, uh, 135 degree. The radius is same to 225 degree and 315 degree. This is the K0, this is the K1, this is the K2, and this is the K3. All we form it, you know, a circle. In this case, the radius 2. Do you understand the idea? Or no? Yes. It's no big deal. It's long, I know, but it's no big deal. It's super easy. You just apply the formula and that's it. Four times the same formula. Zero, one, two, three. Okay, okay, no bad. No bad. Professor, I have a, a question. Hmm? They are asking us for the roots. Can we start with one rather than starting with zero, for example? Like one, two, three, four? Say again? Professor, you started with zero, right? Yeah, always. Yeah. The, form the formula say, the formula say, who is K? Well, K is zero, one, two, three, to, 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 to N minus one. In our specific example, okay, N is four, we got one, two, three, and four. But we we'll start in C. Always. Okay, we always start with zero, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never start in one. 
the currency. This is the formula. I need to respect the formula. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay, there you go. Next question. Next question is compute the fifth rule. Wow. Compute 20, 22, 22, no? 22 say. Compute the fifth root. Okay, let me make it soon. Fifth root. Fifth root. Oh, negative 2i. Push. Negative 2i. Negative 2i. This number is purely imaginary. Okay. And bueno, I need to convert. Mm, could you help me? What is the what is the R and what is the angle of this uh, complex number? So when you convert in polar with R and uh, who is theta for this complex number? Please help me. Come on, opinion guy. R is zero. No, almost zero. Never R is zero. Never R is zero. Never R is equal. I copy the formula. X squared plus Y squared. And theta is equal to tangent inverse. However, it's a quadrantal because it's pure imaginary. So I recommend I explain a few seconds before the idea, the intuitive idea. Why it works. Uh -huh. So my question is, who is R? And who is Taylor? In this example. Come on, thinking. I know what you got. You get that. It's too hard this to understand. Okay. Let's do in the sketch one more time. Yes, I was doing the sketch actually. Well, not necessarily, Noela. This complex number is here, right? Yes or no? Yes, it's negative two. What is the angle? Nobody can help me in this, determine the angle. Right, let me see. All right, in the chat say something, but I don't see the chat. All uh, right, let me see now, maybe the chat is coming to 70. Very well. Okay, to 70. And what about radio? I get that. Without do anything, only only a sketch. And what about radio? Come on, participation. Come on, uh, highly Angelica, Santiago, Nora. Uh, Natalie, Anthony, uh, Kevin, Victor, Michael. Nobody knows that. Opinion, guys. You make a mistake, no problem. Is it no, the square root of the two? Mm, no. No, because look, look. My, oh. my. Uh -huh. is, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Is it the square root of four? Absolutely. And the square root of four is? Two. Two. It's obvious. It's that distance, the green distance, no? Okay, does it my, my complex number minus two i express it in polar four is? Two, 
the same number to cosine i sine 270 degrees. Any question? Uh -huh. What part you don't understand? Come on. I want to discuss it. everything. Come on. I understood, Professor. Okay, okay. The problem is, Noela, that you don't forget it, right? Uh. <laughs> oh, this is the challenge. Now, they apply the formula. The formula say square root fifth of two. Okay, by the way, it's impossible. Simplification more this stuff. Leave it like that. Cosine I sine. So we have 270 degree plus 360 degree multiplication by K divided by 5. This is the argument of the cosine and sine. And you evaluate how many K, what value is the K? K0, K1, K2, K0. K1 until what, what number? Until four. Exactly. In total, we have five solutions because of the fifth root. Huh? The first solution is square fifth root of two cosine I sine. 270 divided by 5. Uh, a fifth root of 2 cosine i sine 54. 54. Degree. Next, a similar. Fifth root 2 cosine i sine 270 plus 360. Time one, because K is one now, divided by five. And you compute this, it's super easy. Cosine I sine, and that number is 126 degrees. K2, cosine I sine, uh, 270, plus 360 sine 2, 4, 5. Uh, remember, according to the order of operation, you are doing the multiplication first, no? Okay, so it's fifth root of 2, cosine i sine, uh, 198 degree. K3, this is 4, sorry. No 5. Is fifth root of 2, Cosine I sine 270 plus 360 times 3 divided by 5. And the answer is fifth root of 2 cosine I sine. Mm -hmm. In this case, 270. Wow. It's a coincidence. And the last one, a fifth root of 2 cosine I sine 270. 70 plus 360 times 4 divided by 5. A fifth root of 2 cosine I sine 342 degree. Boom. Final answer. Option B. Any question? What part is super confusing? No one was good. Professor, can I take a picture? Uh huh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. mm, let's do something about vector. Took one couple of vector uh, and we continue to use it. Remember, the test is due Tuesday at midnight. Okay, we need to say Wednesday in the morning, I grade this test. Okay. So we have time to do everything in, in details and we have no problem. Now we move into the vectors. The question 23 say, 23 say, you have the vector B represent in two dimensions 
3 comma negative 5. Remember, this is the component. I, this is equivalent to say 3i minus 5j, no? Using the unit vector, the orthogonal unit vector. The student can prefer this notation, it's perfect. And w is negative 7 comma negative 4. And they want to you compute 3b minus 4w. Well, this is a multiplication by the scalar. So you multiply three times the vector b and subtracting four times the vector w. Okay, so now we have, this is the vector nine, comma, negative 15, because it's too easy. You multiply this times this, and this times that, like you distribute the property, no? So when you multiply a vector times one scalar number, each component is multiplied by the same number. And here is, well, 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 okay, actually is one well, minus four, forget about the minus for the moment, is 28. There are many ways you include the negative in the multiplication or no, and you subtract it after. You multiply four, forget about this negative for a moment, and you say this is negative 28, and this is positive 16. Uh, no, ne I mean, ne uh, negative, and, and negative, no? negative, negative, right? Negative, negative, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, you multiply four times negative, negative. Okay. Now subtraction, subtraction, you change the sign, there's a nine, negative 15, um, plus, you change the sign, get 28 and 16. Mm -hmm. And it says 37, no? And this is one. And this is one. That's it. Because of 15 minus 16 is one. Clear? Professor, yes. you put W with a negative four, but it has positive four. Ah, uh, that is a reason. Okay, my paper is different to this. Thank you, thank you. She said I put negative incorrect here. This is positive four. Uh, does it positive four here? Uh, does it actually here? Okay, let's do it better like that. Look. Okay, you 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 multiply by three. Uh, there are no reason to separate this. This is nine and negative fifteen. Plus, actually, this is 28 because negative times negative is positive and negative 16. And now, when you combine, not necessarily multiply by negative one again. No, no, no. Hello, hello. 37, comma, negative 31. Okay, the option D. Thank you, Miss. Who are you, Isabella? It's Haley. Okay. Okay, does I propose stop? We continue to use the, the vector part. You take advantage because I suppose the, the class of the Tuesday is too short. So say, hey, you ask me any question, okay? I, professor, do for me again, number something. Yeah, I do for you again, okay. right? Okay. Okay. We almost finished, guys. Try to do the best. Finish, Alex. On time. Remember, the day, the due day for that part is 26, and the due day for the final is 28. 28, no? 28. Are you clear or no? Yes, everything is clear. Have a nice weekend, Professor. Bye bye. You too.